Hey everyone, this is Heidi St. John. Thanks for tuning in today. You guys have found me back here at my little corner of the internet. This is the Off the Bench podcast. And as promised, my friend, Dr. Mark Sherwood is on the show today and we are going to be answering listener questions. This is going to be a fascinating interview. Stick around. I think you're going to be encouraged. All right, you guys, so I'm glad that you've joined me. And uh, today we're going to go ahead and just answer your questions. For those of you who didn't get your questions in on time, I want to remind you because uh, Dr. Mark's going to come back. We're going to continue doing this, but you can submit those to me at HeidiStJohn.com forward slash mailbox Monday. You'll note that the form gives you an opportunity to discuss uh, to talk about what it is the topic is that you're interested in, and then also to go from there to kind of make sure that we get those routed to the right place. But Dr. Mark Sherwood is a naturopathic physician. He's been on my show several times. He ran for governor in the state of Oklahoma, has become a trusted friend to me, and he has taken it upon himself to come here and help answer your questions. My friend, Dr. Mark, welcome back to the show. Heidi, it's great to be back with you. It's good to see you as always, and super honored to be a, a good service to uh, the people on your your broadcast here. Well, it's great to have you. There are a lot of people, and you and I talked about this the last time you were here, that really have a healthy distrust of the medical community now. And I think that's going to go on for a long time. You know, the CDC, the NIH, we have the vaccine industry, you know, a lot of healthy distrust now. And we're watching continued fallout from COVID and the illogical and unconstitutional, and I think even wicked lockdowns, the mask mandates, all of it. Did you see the judge in New York City uh, rule the other day that all of the the employees for the city of New York had to be reinstated? All the unvaccinated that were fired had to be reinstated with back pay? I did see that. And interestingly enough, I was listening to a, a CME, a continuing, you know, medical education summit on my wife's and uh, she was in it and I was listening, but they were talking about you know, uh, patient autonomy. Uh, in other words, can a patient make that decision? Yeah. And really, it boils down to a patient has the right to make good decisions or bad decisions. We all have that right. So it was talking about blood transfusion specifically, but it does apply to vaccines. And it's always been that we have a constitutional right to to choose well or to choose poorly. That's right. That's right. Yeah. And and I thought it was really interesting that the it took a, a Supreme Court judge in the state of New York, not the governor, mm. not the crazy city managers, not the president of the United States, but a judge to say, wow, you guys acted capriciously yeah. and unconstitutionally. And I think this is the first of what is going to be many lawsuits in the weeks to come. What say you? I totally agree. This is a at the beginning of this thing, to try to force human beings to make a medical choice based upon this uh, perception that was presented was purely barbaric, in my opinion. It never made yeah. sense. It never was honest, and it never was constitutional. I mean, I can see and even appreciate some people would get up there with their medical hats on and encourage people to, based upon what their opinion is. And you know, there's side of the coin is I could see people encouraging people not to do it. But it ultimately, Heidi, it boiled down to her own choice, didn't it? Right. And um, right. these Supreme Court, that Supreme Court justice, I think, is um, is heroic, much like the Supreme Court justice or the justice that did uh, pull the mask mandate through airline travel. Same kind of concept. It made it made no sense whatsoever. Yeah, it really didn't. And I'm, I hope, and I said this a long time ago, I hope these uh, these city managers and these tyrannical governors, yeah. I hope they get the pants sued right off of them. I'm, I, I'm looking forward to that. You know, there's, there is going to be a reckoning and uh, I'm looking forward to it. All right. I'm going to jump into these questions because mm. there's a lot of them here. Yeah. I'm going to go ahead and just rattle them off to you. And uh, let's see, let's see how many of these we can get through. Paige okay. in Texas is the first one on the list today. And she wants to know your thoughts about the shingles vaccine. She wrote in and said, I have a dear friend interested in getting the shingles vaccine. In light of how untrustworthy the FDA, the CDC, and the likes have been, I'm not touching that vaccine. What are your thoughts about it? I've tried to find, quote, the science about the shingles jab, but my most favorite websites are about the Fauci ouchie and the <laughs> clock shot, okay, the COVID vaccine. So where can I find more information about the shingles vaccine? Well, unfortunately, the information that's given to us today about vaccines is shrouded in doubt, isn't it? Right. And I think you said at the top, unfortunately, 
people's um, skepticism has grown within the medical community. Let's keep in mind that shingles can occur if a person's been exposed to chicken pox. We all know that. But it's really driven by this inflammatory condition, isn't it? Think about shingles as being an ultra-inflammatory condition. If it were me, and again, I'm all about everybody's choices, I am not going to get a shingles vaccine because I'm going to work on what I can do to keep my systemic inflammation down, understanding that the standard American diet is the great instigator of inflammation. So, you know, that's kind of how I look at that. Um, people can do it when you have vaccines out there. Every time we take a vaccine, Heidi, we trigger the immune system to respond. Many times it can be over-responded to already, and that can tip us over the edge. So when you say that you're going to take better care of your body, right, you're going to mm -hmm. be uh, having a body that's going to help build your body's ability to fight the inflammatory response. What are some things that listeners can do right now that have nothing to do with um, an injection, but rather to bolster their ability to fight inflammation? The greatest medicine ever created was called food. Um, God put medicine in the ground. He put medicine on the trees and medicine Listen, in don't, the bushes. Don't, 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 don't injure my ability to have a donut right now, okay? Because <laughs> I'm going to be making no. donuts on uh, on this weekend for my husband's birthday party. All right, I, no. No, I won't have very many, but I'm definitely going to have a donut. No shame in donuts and no shame in that <laughs> in the, in no shame in that game. No, honestly, it's um it's kind of the repeated process, you know, that we continue to boom, 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 hit it every day, and we we. We consume too much of that processed, genetically modified, that's right, non-nutrient food, and we consume too less of the dense nutrient real food. And therein becomes a quandary. You know, the dense nutrient real food contains nutrients for a reason. These are essential vitamins, minerals, fatty acids, amino acids, Heidi, that actually run the systems of our body. So when we don't consume those things, it's almost akin to having a car that has no spark plug, no yeah. oil, no gas, no starter, and its tires are all flat. Yeah. I said at the very beginning of the Rona that health doesn't come from a mask and a needle. No. And the same thing is true when we're talking about fighting inflammation. We, you know, what I love about your practice there is that you guys are very interested in helping people get to the root causes of why your body is responding the way that it is, right? Mm-hmm. That's very true. And and one person, if you do get shingles out there, one thing we've seen that's worked pretty well is you can take a little bit of the colloidal silver and you can rub it over the top of that and it'll kind of soothe that down a little bit. That's a great idea. I appreciate that. All right, Corey in Idaho, I'm going to keep right on going. Corey in Idaho would like you to talk about perimenopause. Uh, she said, I'd love for you to speak out on perimenopause and midlife female issues. All the naturopathic doctors in my area our new AG and the medical doctors just want to rep, uh, recommend hormone replacement therapy. I love general advice on how to navigate this stage of life naturally, even options that do not include bioidentical hormones. Yeah, there's a lot of things that you can do, and I appreciate the question. So perimenopause can begin 15 years prior to actual menopause, being the average age today at 50 to 51. So we're talking about symptoms that can occur as early as age 35. Point of note, people are reaching menopause much, much faster these days because of stress, because of all the hormones in our environment, early exposure, earlier puberty, of course. And so with that said, when you begin to have these perimenopausal symptoms, you begin to have a depression or dec declination in this hormone called progesterone, which can uh, affect sleep and it can affect mood it can affect anxiety as well in a negative way. You also begin to have a negative production of testosterone while maintaining estrogen, which creates a little bit of an imbalance, and that means more weight retention or more belly fat retention, more irritableness, more um, perhaps emotion, and that can happen in that last 15 years window. What you kind of want to do, it, you, can, you can go down the road of bioidentical hormones, as those are indeed safe and proven effective data. I would not go down the road of these synthetic hormones because those have question marks and some questionable data. You can go down the road if you want to take some herbs. There's things out there like black cohosh, which will actually help with some menopausal symptoms. DIM, D-I-M, which stands for methane. That's actually okay to think about. You can also think about... Um, Things like DHEA, which will help drive an adrenal hormone called DHEA, 
which will drive down the pathway and actually create some testosterone. So that's actually pretty good as well. So those are just a few tips that you can do. And the last thing I'll say from an emotional standpoint, uh, you got to eat right and you got to exercise because exercise is the great uh, metabolizer of adrenaline for sure. So make sure you do that. Make sure you're working your sleep. If sleep begins to wane, don't be afraid to go down the pathway of melatonin. You, that's not going to hurt anybody out there. But if that makes you too groggy, just back off to the dose. Passion flower, lemon balm, or other things. 5-HTP are things to help with mood as well. Um, and certainly realize that you're not crazy. You know, you're going through a time in life and um, don't expect that somebody to understand. You're going through it. What you think and what you say is actually what you're feeling. And find a practitioner that's going to listen to you and have, you know, two ears and one mouth. Boy, boy, that's. This is hard to find right now. We spent two huh. years uh, watching people on national mm. television that had 16 mouths and no ears. Oh, I feel like we're, they had we're living mouths in all a, around their bodies. Mouths didn't they? all around their bodies. <laughs> it's kind of a, a crazy time. We're going to take a quick break. We've got a bunch more questions. We'll be right back. All right, Mark, before the break, we were talking to a mom who has had some uh, questions about perimenopause. And I have a question. You mm -hmm. mentioned uh, you mentioned DHEA. We were talking about adrenal fatigue. And mm -hmm. I told you before the show that I had been hearing a lot about uh, adrenal fatigue. What are the symptoms of adrenal fatigue and how can someone know if this is something they might be struggling with? Well, first understand that adrenal is these little almond shaped glands that sit on top, kind of on top of the kidneys. And they are responsive to how we perceive our environment. So let's look at it as the mind has a mind of its own. It's able to sort of form uh, opinions of images that it's it's seeing and perceiving. And the mind actually causes the chemicals of the brain to operate. So when we perceive out of our mind a stressful situation, whether real or not, whether it's false evidence appearing real or actually a lion chasing you, you're going to start making these chemicals that are going to come from brain hormones, go down to the adrenals. And the first chemical the adrenals are going to kick out is adrenaline. That's a short term, short burst that lasts a little bit of time, you know, up to a few minutes. And then the longer acting stress hormone is called cortisol. Over the course of time, if our body is continuing to dump out cortisol because of this perceived stress, boy, haven't we felt that for the last couple of years with yep. everything. The adrenals, like any other system of the body, can become tired. And they can get worn down. Some people would call it adrenal fatigue. I would categorize it as emotional or life fatigue. So one and the same, just different terms. What one can do on that is understand that DHEA is a hormone that's sort of a co-produced hormone within the adrenal glands that actually you can come up with that at about one to five, maybe a few more milligrams than that. You got to be very easy on that, ladies, because if you come up too fast, you can get a little bit of, uh, well, chin hair. Let's just call it that, right? You don't want to have that too much. Ain't, you know? no, ain't no woman except for the Ulta women. That yeah, really that's want right. That. No. And the you Ulta kinda, dudes, you think they're women. Yeah, we don't, we don't want to have you having sh to get a, go get a razor. That's not cool. <laughs> come up slow. It affects everybody differently. The second thing you can do is take some of these adaptogenic herbs, rhodiola, and ashwagandha are amazing for that ashwagandha kind of stuff. Ashwagandha has been a lifesaver for yes. me. Absolute lifesaver. Yeah. Yeah, these are great. And, and adaptogenic herbs understand that they don't really stimulate. They don't really depress. They sort of bring balance back into your life. So they're absolutely phenomenal. You can use those with no concern of negative effects. Man, I love that. This goes right into Amanda's question in Georgia. She said she wants to know about salt. She said there's so much buzz around salt right now with products like BioLite and Relight. What are your thoughts on them? Should we drink them daily versus just drinking water? Well, go back to the original formulation of Gatorade. What an amazing invention that was for the athletes yep. down there in Florida. Of course, that's been... Um, you know, profitize, let's call it. And yep. there's been and all sugarized. kinds of things, sugarized, you know, and it's made now it's just, it's, it's a money maker and a sickness causer, yep. but let's understand that magnesium, potassium, sodium, chloride, our electrolytes are necessary for the functionality of our electrical system. That makes a lot of sense, doesn't it? So we have to have those in balance. Many times we've been told over the course of the last couple of decades 
that too much salt is bad. It will create higher blood pressure. And that would be technically true. However, most of that salt is the preserved or salt that is used as a preservative in these processed foods. Yep. Extremely high salt. So yes, some of those drinks are good. Make sure they do not have added sugar. Yes, you should do those every day. And yes, you should also use either Celtic sea salt or Himalayan sea salt liberally on your food. Now, if you do have significant hypertension, that would be the only case that I would say be cautious about the salt additive. So Himalayan sea salt, for everybody who's wondering, you can get an actually pretty decent one at Costco. Mm. That's where I found it. And yep. we started using it years ago. And it really is, it really is a game changer. Uh, Melissa in Texas wants to know if she can detox and heal her son from toxins found in vaccines. She said, after the scam of the COVID shots, I've now become mm. concerned about all the vaccines. I allowed so-called experts to persuade me to give my kids from birth to age four following the CDC guidelines back when I believed that this was still a reputable agency. Now, maybe I'm being a bit of a conspiracy theorist, but I can't help but wonder if the two month shots caused my son to have multiple anaphylactic food allergies, which presented at about four months old. I always have a deep need to know the whys. Why did he get these allergies? Why do so many kids have food allergies now as compared to the past? Why do we vaccinate so much heavier now than we did 30 years ago? Those are not my actual questions for you, doctor, but what I want to know is if there's a natural way to detox and possibly heal the child from all the toxins in aluminum that are in so many vaccines. I have so much guilt over giving him these shots and wished I had done my homework back then. Wow. Well, that was, that's, that's a, a lot. lot. Listen, that's a lot to yeah. unpack there, Melissa. <laughs> well, Melissa, I appreciate you asking and you can't go into the minds of, of people, unfortunately, but I suspect the the reason we use so many vaccines is because the liability was transferred over to the federal government back Absolutely in the mid eighties, I think yeah. under the Reagan administration, uh, I believe that's right. Um, yep. But nonetheless, um, we've seen this big influx of vaccines. At the same time we saw that in history, we saw this food pyramid come in. And, and I'm going to get to your allergy question so you really understand that. Multiple allergies and multiple autoimmune conditions, conditions began to develop in rapid form. At the same time, both of those um, corresponding factors collided to the perfect storm. We began to consume a lot of genetically altered, modified, processed grains and bread, you know, the 6 11 service and all that. Those actually destroyed the gut because the body looks at those genetically modified proteins as foreign invaders, just like the ingredients in some of those vaccines, foreign invaders. So they stimulate the immune system to go do its job in the vaccines to try to create antibodies and with uh, some of these chemicals to try to create defense mechanism to tone down the inflammation. All that said, don't have buyer's remorse at this time. Go forward with your child to do what you can. Work to eliminate all known drivers of the immune system, inappropriate drivers. And so the first thing you want to do with that child is look at milk and dairy. Milk and dairy would be a good place to go to. Secondarily and tangentially, one-on-one, -on -one, you want to look at also the breads and grains. Many times when I find that people have those sort of symptoms, you remove the dairy because it has genetically modified proteins. You remove the grains because they too have genetically modified proteins. And many times you'll see the symptoms begin to mitigate. The child has a benefit being a child. They have an opportunity to grow out of that. And, you know, if, if I was a parent these days, I'd feel just like you do, Melissa, I promise you. Yeah. Um, I am not anti-vaccine simply because my mother-in-law died of post-polio syndrome. So I know there's some benefit there somewhere. However, I am totally against, as you are, the pressurization that's put on people with the speed and the volume and the timing, and the frequency that doesn't make sense to me. And it doesn't seem plausible. Our bodies have this adaptive immune system that can adjust to the world. Remember back the old uh, chicken pox parties we had years and years ago. Dude, that my, mom, my mom sent me to a chicken pox party. I'll tell you what. That's it. And that's how our immune system is built by adaptation to the environment. So the best thing to do is begin to take what I just told you. I would, you know, say, you know, prayerfully consider any vaccines going forward. 
prayerfully do that. And then also remove a couple of those things and begin to see what that does to mitigate those symptoms. I love what you said too about removing the guilt because there mm. really is, you know, we, we've had so many people writing yeah. in and saying, I have so much guilt because, you know, I, I took the vaccine or I, I pressured somebody into taking it or whatever it was. And I'm like, listen, guilt is not from the Lord, no. right? There is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. It doesn't help us. It's not changing anything. I love that your advice was just simply to move forward. I think yeah. it's interesting too, you noted uh, among sort of the culprits in this breads and grains. I've got a question for you that sort of comes yeah. off of that. So, you know, I'm on a sourdough kick, right? Mm-hmm. I'm making sourdough <laughs> yeah. bread. I'm telling you, I'm working out my salvation on my stationary bike every day and then <laughs> making sourdough bread. So uh, I started making it because I have a daughter who has a, a very uh, strong gluten sensitivity mm-hmm. and we, you know, and, and so, and and anaphylactic, she's got anaphylaxis. So mm-hmm. which we've got about a 15 second window if she comes in contact with say a tree net or something like that. And so I'm being careful with the grains that we put. We had discovered, someone told us to get uh, einkorn, right? Mm-hmm. To get the whole grain einkorn. So I got myself, I'm turning into the homeschool mom that I've made fun of for a hundred <laughs> years. So all of my listeners are like, listen to Heidi. She's she's finally coming around and, and seeing the light. But I got myself a grain mill Mm-hmm. And I started grinding up einkorn and spelt and, uh, and really going back to whole grains, mm-hmm. like to the, uh, to the ancient, what, what, what people call ancient grains rather than these newer genetically modified grains that are making, you know, that's in almost all of our bread. What do you say? Uh, don't crush my dreams here, Mark. What do you say <laughs> <laughs> to moms who are trying to keep the breads and the grains in their families, but they don't want the GMOs yeah. and all of the gross stuff that comes along with our modern uh, breads that we're eating? I say you record and listen to again and again what you just said. You've got to find a substitute. Honestly, I love the einkorn. I love the spell. I love the idea it that going to really that. really good. It's too. actually great. It's really has this really nutty flavor. I thought I've never tried it. So I, you know, I'm dumping these whole, whole grain einkorn berries into my wheat grinder. I'm feeling actually pretty, I'm feeling pretty pioneer woman, you know, over at my house with my yeah. linen apron, feeling all good about myself. And I thought it came out of my bread <laughs> mill. It's nice and warm, this einkorn flour. And I thought I'm going to try like a little teaspoon of it. It was delicious. It's nothing yeah. like what we, uh, what we get in the stores when we pick up 10 pounds of flour. No, and people need to understand the whys behind that. The the wheat and all these original crops, original grains were never bad. You know, Jesus ate wheat, right? Of course. Yeah. But when you look at it, what's happened is we genetically modified it to avoid the effects of Roundup yep. so that we could grow a little faster crop, more dense and make more money. The problem with that is when we genetically modified it, we made it a little bit foreign. Even though it's 5% foreign, it's still foreign to the body because our genes have only changed 2% in 10,000 years. So we see it as a foreigner, and guess what? It produces these things called exorphins, E-X-O-R-P-H-I-N-S, which bind to our opioid receptors in our brain wow. and make us addicted. That's why the restaurants in America serve you free bread and chips, and they know to steal a line off the Doritos commercial. I bet Man, you no can't one eat, just, eat one. just one. That's right. No way. <laughs> <laughs> They're not wrong. They're not wrong. No. Oh, man, it's so true. This is great. I've got some more questions, but we're out of time yeah. for today. Um, I'd love it if you could come on next week and let's let's pick this up where we left off. So many people with questions right now. And, there, and I think, and I said this on my show the other day, yeah. there's a real hunger to go back to a simpler way of living. Instead of, you know, uh, we've had so many things pushed at us now for so long. I think people are feeling fatigued from it. And I'm watching the old arts are coming back, right? I don't think I'm the only one who's out there figuring out how to grow microgreens in her kitchen (laughs) and make uh, and grind my own flour and start making sourdough bread at home. And you know what's crazy? We feel better. My daughter is feeling better. You know, we feel better when we're uh, when we know where our food comes from. And I think it's it's incredibly important. You guys have an awesome. uh, ministry, really. I like to call it a business tree because really you're yeah. ministering to, yeah. uh, it's a business, but obviously you're ministering to the hearts of people at, uh, at Sherwood.tv. Can you tell listeners a little bit about what you do and where they can find you? Cause I'm noticing you've got everything on your website from nutritional meal shakes to a yeah. health reset program, all kinds of things. What can people find at Sherwood.tv forward slash Heidi? 
Well, we are designed by the mission and call we have in our life to lead people down the pathway of true healing. And to do that, we have all kinds of plans and programs and processes that do two things. It alleviates them and gives them a chance to get off of unnecessary use of medication. Notice Mm -hmm. the word unnecessary. The second thing is it allows them the opportunity and gives them the pathway to reverse these self-chosen diseases that they may or may not have known they chose. Things like type 2 diabetes. Um, I call the growing obesity crisis a disease. Uh, Autoimmunity. You know, we got high blood pressure. We got osteoporosis. You know, these things can be corrected, avoided, and reversed. And when people come to us, they're going to get our whole heart and care because this is our ministry. And we genuinely, deeply care about people. And wherever you are within this wonderful world, especially right here in the U.S., we can we can help. You don't need to come to our clinic. You know, we can help you remotely as well. I love that. And so you guys have supplements. There are mm-hmm. books. Uh, you know, you've been helping me and my family now for a while, and we've just been so blessed by it. So Mm. I really want people to be able to find you and have access to the wonderful healing, that uh, insight that God has really given you guys. So you guys can find that at Sherwood, S-H-E-R-W-O-O-D.tv forward slash Heidi. And you will notice that if you use the promo code Heidi on checkout, depending on what you're purchasing there, you can actually save quite a bit of money. So uh, I'm excited to be able to see uh, our listeners take advantage of that. Yes, ma'am. Me too. I'm so grateful and I look forward to answering some more questions. Anybody out there, just keep your questions coming. Obviously, we want to provide you with some hope so that you can become a hope dealer like Heidi St. John. Oh, I love that. (laughs) My friend, Mark Sherwood, it's just been a real joy as always to have you back. Let's do it again next week. And I'm going to keep a running list of these questions. For those of you listening to this, so you would like your question answered by my friend, Dr. Mark Sherwood, you can go to HeidiStJohn.com forward slash Mailbox Monday and let us know. One of the things that I think you're going to love about Mark is there's not an area that he's unwilling to dive into. And a lot of the questions that are coming into us here at the show regarding the culture, regarding what's happening in the medical world, uh, I think you guys are going to get a real dose of truth and a real dose of hope. And that is what we're all about. So my friend, Dr. Mark, thanks for coming on. Let's do it again. Amen. Look forward to it. Have a good one. You too. For more information on Dr. Mark Sherwood, you can go to sherwood.tv forward slash Heidi and check it out. You guys are going to be encouraged. Again, if you've got questions for Dr. Mark Sherwood, you'd like to see addressed at the show, heidistjohn.com forward slash mailbox Monday. Have a great weekend, everybody. Thank you so much for listening. And I'll see you back here again at the intersection of faith and culture. For more encouragement, visit me online at momstronginternational.com.